And joining us now is Linda Clary, mother of John Umberger and John's brother, Nathan Umberger, who was commissioned as an officer in the U.S. Army today. I, I so appreciate you speaking with us, and I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you, and we appreciate you covering the story very much. And it's, thank you, thank you. Linda, I wanna start with you. Can you take us back? Uh, you were told at first that John's death was due to an overdose, but you actually traveled to New York and demanded to speak with the detective. What in your gut told you that there was more to it? And what did you tell him? Well, it was putting together the pieces that, um, John, in my mind, John would not have died of a drug overdose, but then as we went through and discovered that credit cards were maxed out, his personal credit cards as well as his company credit card, and then as we dug deeper into his phone and the activities that occurred, that there was a taxi ride early in the wee hours of May 28 that he never showed up for, but ordered that was in front of the queue. And so we um, did go to New York to retrieve his body. And then we retraced every step that he took Friday evening, May 27th, and met with the friends that he had gotten together with and put the whole timeline together and between the money that was taken as well as the timeline, it didn't add up. And at first they wanted to say, oh, well, John was at a club and he got robbed and his phone got taken because that is another key thing, as you pointed out, of the phone being taken. And the people continue to like do read text messages and be active on Facebook and Instagram and you think, in my case, I thought my son was active in reading my text messages, but in fact, he was not. That's just something they do. And so we went to the 19th precinct. There were seven of us, and we asked to speak to the detective who was a burglary larceny detective. And we basically refused to leave. And finally, after over two and a half hours, he of sitting in the lobby, he agreed to meet with us. And when we presented our information and the work we had done, he looked at the story a little differently. Wow. I mean, Linda, what a testament um, to both you and, and the other people, the other uh, loved ones who went with you uh, to, to not rest mm -hmm. and um, to, to follow your instinct there. You know, we, we know John was seen on camera with two individuals shortly before his death, first leaving the bar together, later getting out of a car at the Manhattan townhouse where he was staying, and then later where his body was found days later. What have police told you about those men who were with John that night? Well, we know that they, you know, sort of sandwiched John between them in the back seat of a car. At the same time, John had ordered his own ride. And so John was in that car for over an hour driving around Manhattan. And then they um, arrived where John was staying. Uh, they got out of the car and then 45 minutes left the building. And, and that is all that I know and what I have been told. Okay, and we know Julio and Ramirez. Appears. Sorry, sorry, Linda. I know Julio Ramirez was also left for dead no. in a cab by two strangers. Have police managed to connect these men to the men seen on the video with your son? Yes, and, and I, I cannot thank NYPD Detective Randy Rose enough because he is the homicide detective that was assigned to John's case. And he is the one that has been committed to bringing these people in uh, to face the consequences of their action, keep the streets of New York safe, and to bring justice for John and Julio. And he is the one that went back and went through surveillance footage and details of Julio's case, as well as other cases. And he is the one that put it together that it's the same people. Um, doing it and, and the same people responsible. Have police I, I just cannot thank him enough. Linda, have police discussed any suspects or leads in your son's case? And also, what has the DA told you so far? Well, they, they have identified uh, certain people 
and um, they are, are doing their best to issue what they need to do to um, arrest them and bring them in. And, and, you know, here again, we're grateful to the DA's office. It just seems unfortunate that it took so long mm. uh, for things to happen because meanwhile, other people are getting hurt and, and that we don't want. Absolutely. Uh, do you have any idea how soon those arrests may happen? No, I don't. To me, you know, we want them to happen as soon as possible, but I, I don't know. What is delaying it? Do you know? I, I'm not sure. I, I think a lot of it is, is, you know, just tracking people down. I, I'm not sure. Um, but as long as these people are still out on the streets, other people are not safe. Absolutely. And I do want to bring that is the greatest concern. I understand. I do want to bring in your younger son, Nathan. Nathan, can you help us understand more about what John was like? Is there a memory in particular that you'd like to share with us? Um, well, most notably, I always remember John as someone who was always loving. I'd say I most rem uh, remember him as being always committed to loving others. And he'd never let you uh, stray away from him. Uh, always was committed to calling and ensuring that uh, you felt welcome to um, discuss anything in your life. And that's something that I'll miss about him. And I hope it doesn't happen to anyone else. So I'd like to see the people responsible brought in. That way no other family uh, has to face um, what we have gone through. I completely understand. And Linda, can you tell us about the spirit that he leaves behind, who he was as a person? What do you want us to know? John was someone who never knew a stranger and just brought life to the party, brought life to us and was always entertaining um, and, and just, he was challenging. He always challenged me to push myself outside of my comfort zone and do more, but, and very determined, very determined and a, and a bright light and, um, you know, he, he, what can I say? He, he was my first son and I loved him and he was just a blessing. I can't thank you enough for sharing a little bit of him with us. Linda Clary, Nathan Umberger, thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing about the story, for being willing to speak about it and um, for allowing us to, to continue to track this case and seek justice for him. Thank you for your time tonight.